Hello, Forecaster here, and in this video we're going to have another look at tokens, specifically some methods of keeping track of tokens, and some more advanced ways of doing that. So here we have the most basic one, or one of the most basic ones, and this is the method I used in the original token video, and this is a vanilla RS latch. And as you can see, I've color coded it this time to make it a little more obvious what it does. So we have two inputs, the blue block here and the green block here. And when the blue block is powered, the blue input or the blue output here is going to turn on. When the green block is powered, the green output is going to turn on. And we have this hooked up to our rails using locomotive detectors and controller and receiver boxes. So we have the check-in point um, connected to the green input here. So when a locomotive passes by the t detector, the green output here is going to turn on. This is going to power this controller box, which will turn off the locking track, which will catch the next train that tries to enter this area here. When the locomotive that entered comes back around, passes by the checkout here, it will power the blue input, which will turn off the green output and turn on the blue output. The blue output, of course, doesn't do anything, it's just a state. So, if we turn on the locomotives here, we are simply going to see that one enters, the latch toggles, the next locomotive is caught and stopped. It's not allowed to enter the area because we only want one locomotive at a time because of this narrow bridge here. Um, if we allowed both to enter, they would collide. But now that one has cleared the bridge and the next one can enter. And now the first one is going to be caught and stopped. Pretty simple. It's essentially the same setup that I had in the original video, but without the intersection. It's very similar to the second video, actually. We're just going to stop these, not have them move around unnecessarily. Here, we have the same setup, but using a Project Red toggle latch instead. And this is, of course, present in a few mods something similar to this, quite a few, um, but I'm using this one. So what we have is a latch connected to the input or the check-in and check-out points. And on one of the outputs of the latch, we have a controller box connected to the locking track. So when a locomotive passes by the detector, the latch will toggle, which will depower the locking track, which will catch the next train. Now, a difference between one of these toggle latches and the RS latch over there is that this has a combined input for the checkout and check-in, while that latch has a separate input. So if, if say, two locomotives pass by the detector after each other without checking in first. Nothing is going to happen because the output uh, will toggle over once no matter how many times the input is powered. Here, when either of these power, the latch will toggle. So if the token, the token is now in, it is available. When a locomotive will trigger this detector, the latch will toggle, which will check out the token. Now, if the detector is triggered again, the latch will toggle over again, which will check the token back in, which will confuse the system. Uh, and this can cause problems. That's why I would recommend using a latch like this one, which uh, can't, where this can't happen. Um, but it still works, 
assuming nothing triggers the detectors by accident when they shouldn't, uh, this still works fine. And I want to turn that to train lockdown mode, I think. That's fine. Um, so pretty much works the same as over there. Uh, but if we uh, if we allow this to get caught and we'll also give it a cart because why not and we trigger this detector you'll see that it will, it will be let in because the system thought that the token was available when it really shouldn't be let's destroy these uh, now over here we have a counter instead of a uh, toggle latch. Now this is uh, accident proof much like the RS latch because we have a separate input for uh, checking in and checking out the tokens. We have a negative input which is connected to the checkout and we have a positive input which is connected to the check-in of course. Uh, another advantage of the counter of course if we set it to if we set the maximum to one we of course have the equivalent of the RS latch at, in the beginning but we can if we want increase the counter to have multiple tokens to check out. Um, so if we want we can have two trains in this area and as you can see I've done away with the bridge because we don't want to have collisions. Now if I were to turn these on uh, we now have two tokens available so we're going to see two trains entering the area while the third one will be stopped and the ones behind it will get stuck as well of course now as soon as one of these exit another one will be let in so when these two exit the area two more will be let in and the third one will be stopped pretty simple so going to make all of these stop now finally we have a much more interesting setup thanks to Computronics which is a computer craft and open computers add-on um, adding these digital controller and receiver boxes we can have a computer controlled token system now what you need to do is you place a digital receiver and a digital controller the, each of these can be connected to up to 32 controller and receiver boxes respectively. So you can have a, the digital controller can be connected to 32 receiver boxes and the receiver box can be connected to 32 controller boxes. So here we have two what I would call groups. So this is group 1 and this is group 2 and you'll see that uh, these two controller boxes here linked to the detectors are connected to this digital receiver box here and this controller box or this receiver box I mean is connected to this controller box here and we can control all of this with a computer so I've written a program that will keep track of the tokens for these two groups separately and control when the trains are let in. Um, we are actually going to want to update this so we don't have any collisions like so. So first we're going to have a look at the program. Now, like I said, Computronics, this add-on, is compatible with both Open Computers and ComputerCraft. Uh, however, I use Open Computers, so that is what I will show. Um, 
but the functionality is very similar with both mods um, I believe but I'm going to show how to do this for open computers so we are going to have a look at my tokens program and the risk quite a bit um, up here we have a function that I have uh, gotten from the internet which will split a string uh, by a delimiter you'll see that I've named each of these boxes in each group and you can do this with the um, what's this called this is called something uh, where is it let's see uh, let's search for name I should find it there we go the signal label and that's part of Railcraft it was added in Railcraft 9.10 um, I believe so you will name this something in an anvil and as you can see I have three different ones and the way the program works it checks it splits this string into or at this uh, hyphen so we get a number and this string here this is the group of course so we have all of these start with two and then all of these start with one and then we have three different modes we have the in which is the check-in and then we have the out which is the checkout and then the control which is the output for the uh, lock lockdown track or locking track so what the program does is we have a table here also known as an array which we have one per group and this contains another table which contains two values the current number of tokens and the maximum number of tokens and when we set this these two should be the same these sh these should be the max um, so down here we have a loop that runs continuously as long as this variable is set to true and this is a way to turn off the program when we need to this checks for an event which we are setting here so we use the event poll to listen for events and when there is an event we assign it to these variables here and if the event is interrupted which happens when you press control C uh, we do we set running to false which will after this code has run once it will it won't reinitiate this loop so it will turn off the it will shut down the program here we also set the output of each of the controllers to which is the output to the tracks to five which up here we can see corresponds to the red aspect which means that we will stop any trains from entering the area when the program isn't running uh, if the event is the aspect changed which is output when one of these um, controller boxes uh, when they change uh, we want to do something with the tokens so first we check if the aspect is green which is one which we have commented out up here as you can see and then we uh, let's see up here we use the split function to split the origin which is the third value output by the event and this contains this the name of the box that triggered the event 
so it will contain the string which we split by the hyphen like I said and then we get a table which we call data which will have the two values as uh, one and two so we put those into the group variable and the mode variable then in here we check the aspect like I said and then we check the mode if the mode is in that means a train wants to go into the area or has gone into the area we then need to uh, remove a token from the counter so we refer to the token uh, array up here or table by the group number the group ID so we refer to one of these two definitions here um, and we will remove one so I've created functions for uh, decreasing and increasing the values and then we put that back into the place where we put it or took it um, and then we output some data so we can see what's going on on the screen if the mode is out we do the opposite uh, we want to that means a train has left the area and we want to add a token back we also check if there are tokens available and that um, the current token value is less than the maximum before we add or remove anything. Uh, then at the end here, we want to check if there are to if there are no tokens available when the value is zero we are going to want to set the output for that group to red which will turn off the locking track otherwise if there are more than zero tokens available we want to set it to green because that means that another train will be allowed to enter um, and that's pretty much it so also we have a, a short loop here which loops through each of the groups and turns on the uh, the locking tracks again because as you saw if down here when we turn off the program we turn off all of the locking tracks so when we run the program again we want them to turn back on uh, otherwise nothing is going to happen so that's the program. So if I run this by typing in the name of the program there, we can now see that things have started happening. Now group one has three tokens available. Or should. Oh. I have not replaced these with locomotive detectors here that's bad uh, hopefully it should correct itself yes right so group one has three tokens available as you could see in the table I defined in the program so it, it's letting three locomotives in at a time Group 2 has two tokens to hand out, so it is letting two locomotives in at a time. Uh, probably not going to see any stopping there because of the travel distance. And because of the table that defines each of the groups, it would be it will be pretty easy to change the number of tokens available and as you can see it prints out which group has updated and how many tokens out of how many there are left now if we close the program by pressing control C uh, you'll see that the um, the tracks are now off so all of the trains will stop because the 
program is no longer running. Um, so if we go back in, we can edit the program and we can change the number of tokens. So we want group 1 to have two tokens now and we want group 2 to have one token. So if we ch save our changes, uh, close the editor, and then run the program again, we'll now see that group 2 lets in one locomotive, or one train, and group 1 has let in two. Let's... Uh, I was hoping to stop it to put some distance between them, but whatever. But yeah, so that is that. We have a computer controlled token system. And of course, you can control up to uh, 16 different groups with uh, just two of the, uh, with just a pair of these. Because you need two controller boxes per group, which means that you can only connect 16 groups. Um, then you would have to add another digital receiver box, which is fine. Um, but yeah. And then you can have another 16. And this, of course, you only need one receiver box, so you will be able to control 32 groups with a single digital controller box. Um, so, this program is going to be uh, put on Pastebin and linked to in the description. I'm also going to provide a world download uh, so you can dissect this and test things on your own. It will require Railcraft 9.10 and one of the uh, most recent builds of Computronics, if uh, if these features have been released, which I'm not sure they have, uh, but when they are, you will be able to try this uh, using this world. So, with that, I will see you in the next video.